What's going on guys? RDAP Dan, Federal Prison Time Consulting here. If you or anybody you know is potentially facing a federal prison sentence and want to know how we can help you reduce your sentence through RDAP, sentence reduction, PSR preparation, narratives, character reference letters, click on the link in the description right now. Set yourself up for a consultation and find out how we can help you. People helping people, community's method, one day at a time. federal prison consultant and how I got into this industry is I actually went to federal prison myself in 2014 and today we're taking a little drive back through the prison where I actually served my time at Coleman Federal Prison and Coleman Federal Prison is actually the largest federal prison in the United States it's got two penitentiaries a medium a low security and a women's camp. So I worked for a doctor in 2011 that was charged with over prescribing oxycodone and other types of pain pills, schedule two narcotics. And because I did not bring it to the intention of the DEA, I, <laughs> I ended up receiving a federal indictment in 2011 for conspiracy to distribute. I fought my case from 2011 until 2014 with 13 other co-defendants, at which point all of us took a plea agreement as we were facing a little over 25 years if we had gone to trial and lost. So I took a plea deal, which capped my sentence at 60 months, meaning they couldn't give me anything more than 60 months. And fortunately for me, my day of sentencing, the judge downward departed from the cap and gave me a sentence of 42 months. So I thought I was going to serve three and a half to four years in federal prison. There's a program called RDAP, Residential Drug Abuse Program, and because I had substance abuse issues with alcohol and marijuana, I qualified for a program called RDAP, Residential Drug Abuse Program, which reduced my sentence by up to 12 months. So I was able to take this program in prison. I was also given 15% good time through the feds. They took a year off for the residential drug abuse program and then they sent, then they sent me to the halfway house for the last 11 months of my sentence. So I ended up only serving 13 months in federal prison. And as you can see right here to our left, this is the actual low security prison where I spent my entire time. And there's women right now out on these lawn mowers, and these are actual inmates. All of the females do all of the work in the entire prison. They cut the grass, they do everything. And we've got one literally right here with her red headphones on. My girlfriend, Shelly, she was also sentenced with me and she did her time at the camp here at Coleman. And that was her job. She used to ride around on the little lawn mowers, um, cutting grass for the rest of the Bureau of Prisons. You got the rec yard right over here. You can see the basketball courts through there. You can see the bleachers. Basically, there's two softball fields over there. There's a football field, uh, basketball, handball, soccer. There's a half mile track that people are walking around right now. So there's plenty of time to get fitness. Getting ready to go to federal prison was extremely terrifying to the point where I thought my life was going to be over. And I imagined prison being Kind of like what you see on TV. That was my only real comparison at that point was rapes and violence, extortion. And I had no idea how I was supposed to prepare for this because I'd never been in any real trouble before. So when I found out I was going to prison, I thought it was going to be exactly like what I saw on TV, Locked Up Abroad or the TV show Oz, just tons of violence. And they do have those kind of prisons. As you can see right here, they have uh, the U.S. Penitentiary. This is where you see severe violence, uh, concussion grenades going off. It's exactly what you see on TV. There's ambulances leaving here on the daily of people being taken out in body bags because of the gang violence or just, it's a different world. 
So it was pretty serious. And being at a low security, not having that kind of threat, but hearing it, I just thanked God every day that I was not in that kind of a situation to where I had to worry about that type of, type of living. The other inmates was one of my biggest fears is how are the other inmates gonna perceive me? What are they gonna be like? Am I gonna get along with anybody? You know, I really felt like I was in this world by myself. And when I got to prison and I met all of these individuals that were really no different than me, some of them different backgrounds, different cultures, different upbringings, but we all had one common factor. We all were in federal prison together and we all shared a common, a common bond. And it was more like a brotherhood in there where everybody gave respect. I really saw more respect given in federal prison than I see in the free world. People holding doors for you, people saying sorry if they bump you by accident. Uh, it, it was just, it's so different in there because you're around these people 24 seven. When I was released from prison in 2015, I didn't know what I was gonna do. Uh, I moved to Spokane, Washington to be closer to my girlfriend. That's where she was originally from. Her family lived there, so she wanted to be there until I got out. And I had no idea what to do. I was living in a federal halfway house and I'd go to work every day and I had some free time. Right before I went to prison, I posted a video on YouTube kind of talking about I'm getting ready to go to prison to serve a 42 month sentence. I don't know what to expect. Pretty much just a terrified video of what I thought prison was going to be like. And when I got out of prison in 2015 and I saw that video and all of the views that it had and comments from individuals just like me, first time, nonviolent, white collar individuals getting ready to go to prison, they all had the same questions and the same concerns that I had and the same fears. So I started posting response videos as to what people could actually expect, what they could do to potentially reduce their sentence, how they should be preparing letters to judges, a little bit of everything to try to reduce fear and anxiety for somebody else that may be going through a very, very tough period of their own life. So right now, we're driving through the women's portion of where they do a lot of their work. So you basically see all these women wearing tan shirts and green pants. These are all female inmates, which is surprising how we're allowed to just drive through here. I mean, are we actually allowed to drive through here? I don't really know, but I can tell you that it's just wild that we can drive right up in here and to pass contraband off or, or introduce drugs into the prison system, it would not be very hard. I mean, sure, I'm sure there's cameras everywhere, but at the same time, it wouldn't be very hard to drop something out of your car to give these women something to bring into the prison. So you have to imagine there's high levels of contraband being brought into this prison on a regular basis. This is where I spent my time, right here at the Federal Prison. This is where you'd actually go in if you get intake when you self-surrender, right behind me. So, hope you guys enjoyed the footage. Marty, Dan, and I'm out of here.